Here we've got the piston. At the top of that piston and cylinder, you can see the beam, which is moving that way. What happens here is this boiler, which is currently absent, will fill this chamber with steam, at which point it will be flooded with some water. That steam condenses, and that will pull that beam downward. Gravity completes the return stroke by letting it back up. And on the other end of this beam, it will be operating a pump, lifting water out of the mine. This thing gets something like a 2% efficiency rate. It's obscenely low. And the, the watt engine actually didn't improve it that much. I think it gets in the realm of like 6, 6%, 6 but still it's three times better. If those numbers are correct, mind you. It was actually the challenge of moving water uphill that made steam power viable for the first time. The new Coleman steam engine behind me works on the principle of condensation. They understood the power of steam, or rather, of a vacuum. When water turns to steam, it increases massively. The difference in volume is just staggeringly huge. It's orders of magnitude. And then what they would do is they would flash water into this, which would condense the steam and create a vacuum. That vacuum pressure would actually pull down a piston and then you would have to, that would raise up some water and then you would fill that chamber with steam again and kind of get it hot. And then the beam would move and then you would condense it again. Because you were constantly making the cylinder very hot and then cold and then trying to heat it back up again, these engines were enormously inefficient. And there was really no viable place to use them except in raising water from mines, particularly coal mines, where you basically have an endless supply of the material to keep this thing running. In those cases, it could be made to work. James Watt, in developing the steam engine further, had the idea of having a separate condenser, which allowed you to have a hot portion of the engine and a cold portion of the engine separately, which increased the efficiency massively and made it cheaper and more economical to use steam engines in other factories. Here we have the Place for stoking the fire. Steam fills the chamber. The beam falls down with gravity. Steam is in there. At this point, water valve is open and water is sprayed into the cylinder. That causes a vacuum which pulls the beam down. Over here on the other end of the beam is the pump. This is the pump. This is where at the top end of that beam, this is what's lifting the water up and out of the mine. One thing about this piston that I, I find just so fascinating is, again, that vacuum principle. Because it's the total opposite of the way the engines work in your car. Um, at least in terms of, you know, instead of pushing with an expanding, exploding gas, pushing a piston along, instead we're pulling it down with a change in pressure. So, I mean, it's the same. Just force is coming from the other end. It's just so interesting to me uh, that the concept was to use suction. We understand suction, that's, a, that's an idea from this time. They're doing experiments with vacuum pressure and realizing, oh wow, you can get a lot of, a lot of force with a vacuum, that's an impressive thing. And then the idea of you know, sucking water out of the mines, maybe that suction idea inspired this. This particular type of engine dates from the late 1600s, so late 17th century. And again, it was really only economical in the mines, mostly. For me, the most fascinating thing about steam power is how late in the game it comes. Having, having a mode of power that doesn't rely on the weather, like in wind, or doesn't rely on your geography, like water, the advantage of being able to have a, a power source that isn't dependent on those things is huge. Also one that isn't dependent on your muscles, which you know have an upper limit that's pretty easy to reach and exhausting to reach. But the technology to build a steam engine actually came way earlier. The ability to make, you know, a cylinder, okay, we can do that. The ability to make um, a piston, we can do that. The ability to make a boiler, we've done that for a long, long time. People have been very good at conserving heat and building complicated chambers that are designed to move the heat where they need to be, basically giant heat exchangers in the form of pottery kilns and elsewhere. You know, the Greeks uh, in the first century AD were experimenting with steam engines as near as we can tell. Huron of Alexandria built a desk toy called the Aleophile, um, and that's basically all it was used for. It spun around with jets of steam, and 
his contemporary said, bravo, what an excellent desk toy. Of course, there's no use for that. And it's fascinating to me that the application didn't catch on earlier when the technology, all the necessary ingredients to make it happen were present. In other words, all the groundwork was laid. The part that was missing was the idea. This is actually very similar to wheels in the Americas. In the Americas, as far as we can tell with the archaeological evidence, wheels were not used for wagons, for potter's wheels, for querns, for basically any sort of rotary motion. The wheel, as we know it, did not exist. Um, there's one exception, children's toys. In the Andes region, in the Inca cultures, we found some examples of children's toys pulled along on little wheels. And so the idea of making the jump in the application, all the ingredients are there. Making a wheel is fairly simple. They had exceptionally good metal crafting, particularly in the Andes region. They had the ability to work with wood all over the place. The ability to make a wheel should be easy, but you know, it's not it's not as easy as you would think or it would have happened. I mean, these are incredibly intelligent people. And so I wonder what applications I'm missing. What things, if only the idea were present, would I be able to do with the groundwork that has already been laid in, in my life, in my area? Things that seem that obvious in retrospect to me suggest that maybe there are more. More of these obvious, or rather non-obvious until they're discovered inventions. And, and who knows, maybe you'll discover some of those. If you have other examples of this sort of obvious thing that just didn't happen, even though the groundwork was already laid for it in history, then please talk about it in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe below. We look forward to seeing you next time.